exciting, everybody. We wanted you to get an opportunity to just get a little taste of what our worship night was like and baptism, and it was awesome. I, I get so fired up. People getting saved at the service, people who didn't plan on getting baptized get baptized. It's, it's pretty amazing. I encourage you to come next time we do that. If you've never been water baptized, listen, Jesus was water baptized. I encourage you to do it also. People have asked me, well, Pastor Rick, I got, I got sprinkled with water when I was a kid. Well, I've been sprinkled and dunked, so I know I'm covered, everybody. So I encourage you to do both. If you've, never, if you've never been water baptized by your own free will, I encourage you to do that. Well, how are you today? It's so good to see you. It's so good to be in God's house. I hope you're going to come Friday. That's going to be an awesome movie. Come earlier than 7 because we have a lot of people here. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a great time. And we can all afford free. <laughs> so don't, don't let money be the issue, okay? And there's concessions for a donation. If you don't have anything, God bless you. You can have it. But uh, we're glad you're here. Today we're continuing our series called Standing Out from the Crowd. And this uh, subtitle is called Who Will You Worship? You know, in the Bible, Jesus said the following in John chapter 16, verse 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. God wants you to have peace, right? In this world, you'll have trouble or trials or tribulations or what have you. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus already won it all, man. How many know at the end of the day, those of us serving Christ, we win? Come on, that, uh, come on, we win. Amen, everybody? I love Romans 8, 28. It says, we know that God causes everything to work together for, for the good for, of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose for, for them. God works everything together for your good. So this morning, maybe you're going through some stuff. God will work it for his good. And he said, Jesus said, we can have peace in the midst of the storm. You know, in this series, Standing Out from the Crowd, it's to help you and I just have the summon the courage by the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us to be the people that God's called us to be, the men or the woman of God God's called us to be. In the story we're going to look at in the book of Daniel chapter 3, King Nebuchadnezzar, he's changing the rules of the game, his expectations of his people. And sometimes leaders can ask things that contradict the Bible. And how many know if it contradicts the Bible, we're going with the Bible? Amen, Amen everybody. If you're not sure, that's what we do. We, we, we hold on to the Word of God because the Word of God, how many know it doesn't change with the testing of time, right? It's steady. It's the same all the time. So I want to start in the book of Daniel chapter 3. The king's name in this time is Nebuchadnezzar, and he makes this gold statue 90 feet tall. I was thinking this morning, I would have loved to have melted that down and took the gold. Nine feet tall, or, or wide, and 90 feet tall. That's a big gold statue. And he sent messages to all the who's who of the community to come there. Governors, princes, captains, judges, treasures, you name it. They were all coming. And when they arrived, they were standing before this monument, this, this gold statue. Verse 3 says, when the band strikes up, you are to fall flat on the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will be immediately thrown into a flaming furnace. I don't see any... Uh, any letters, <laughs> any, any emails, or any, any notifications on Facebook. They just said, hey, man, when you get here, <laughs> you're going to drop to the ground, and you're going to worship this 90-foot-tall gold statue. You may have never done it before, but guess what? This is a new rule in town. When the band plays, that's what you're going to do. Okay. Not a lot of choices there, so worshiper, die. That's what they're saying there. Verse 7, when the band began to play, everyone 
whatever his nation, his language, or his religion, fell to the ground and worshiped the idol. Isn't it sad that people gave up their culture, their heritage, their religion, everything they knew since they were little people just because the king made a new rule? Now, how many know that king's a little crazy, but nevertheless, crazy people sometimes are in charge, and this king is crazy. I mean, can you imagine building a 90-foot tall statue out of gold? And that's what he does. He says, you're all going to worship. And the crazy part is all these people did what they were told. They gave up whatever they knew, whatever they were taught from little kids in their faith. They, they gave it all up in a moment. But some of the officials went to the king and accused some of the Jews for refusing to worship. Don't you love a tattletale, everybody? Your majesty, you made a rule or you made a law that everyone must fall down and worship the gold statue when the band begins to play and that anyone who refuses is going to be thrown into the flaming furnace. But some of those Jews out there, and then they name them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm like, come on, man. Thanks a lot, right? Tell them exactly who they were whom you put in charge of Babylon's affair, you know, some of your leaders, they defied you, serving, they're refusing to serve your gods and to worship the gold statue you set up. Nebuchadnezzar being the understanding guy that he is, right? It says he's in a terrible rage, ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be brought before him. Isn't it interesting? <laughs> There's no consideration of their upbringing, their values, their morals, but everybody expects them to listen, but nobody appreciates where they've come from and what their culture and their background was. Just, that's free for thought. I thought, wow. I mean, talk about making something. <laughs> you, we're not going to shun you. We're going to throw you in the furnace so you burn. How many know that's terrible? <laughs> I mean, that's what, that's your options. You bow or you're going in the furnace. That's a morbid way to deal with stuff. So I want to talk to you about standing out from the crowd. The first thing I put there, be willing to obey God even when it's not popular. Come on, I need a little interaction here today, right? And, and that's just how we have to be. We have to be people that stand up for our values and our belief system that comes from the Bible. Because I told you, society will change, but the Word of God doesn't change, right, everybody? It's steady and it's the same. So the people gave up their beliefs out of fear, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, the apostles said this, We ought to obey God rather than men. Come on, amen, everybody. We're, we're more concerned with the eternity side than the here and now side, they're saying in the book of Acts. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, don't be conformed to this world or don't act like the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what's good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I know the will of God because of the word of God. Amen? Amen. So I pour myself into this so I understand and know the perfect will, perfect, acceptable will of God for my life. Again, society's standards are always changing, but God's standard or God's word is not changing. Verse 14. So the king's mad. We already know that because it says he has a terrible rage. Come on, veins popping. You all know the popping. You've seen the popping. There you go. Get you all mad at you. And he says, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he demanded, that you're refusing to serve my gods? Man, I can't believe you'd go in a different direction than me. And to worship the, God, the, the statue I set up? I'll give you one more chance. You get one more and when the music plays, if you fall down and worship the statue, it's all good. All will be forgiven. All will be well. Come on. You get one more chance. This is it, guys. Take this seriously. But if you refuse, you'll be thrown into a 
flaming furnace within the hour. And what God can deliver you out of my hand then? <laughs> well, you're about to find out. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied. Listen to the reply. O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not worried about what will happen to us. If we're thrown into the flaming furnace, our God's able to deliver us. And he'll deliver us out of your hand, your majesty. Come on, right? With the salute. But if he doesn't, please understand, sir, that even then we will never under any circumstance serve your gods and worship the, God, the gold statue that you have erected. So regardless how this things go, I'm not bowing down when the band begins to play. <laughs> I, I like their, who some people can say it, but how many of some people bring it, right? We, we, the second thing I wrote down, we, we have to be a people of faith. We, if we're going to change our generation, if we're going to stand out from the crowd, we have to be a people of faith. We've got to be intentional, and we've got to build our faith now, not when the storm comes. And if you're going through a storm, God will give you grace, but man, it's better to prepare beforehand than during a storm. Build your faith, grow in your faith, grow in your relationship with God, because faith moves mountains. Hebrews 11 is considered the, uh, the faith chapter, the faith hall of fame. In verse 35, I want to read to you, it says, it says, Some women, through faith, received their loved ones back again from death. So they, they were rose from the dead. That's pretty cool. But others trust God and were beaten to death preferring to die rather than turn from God and to be free, come on, trusting that they would rise to be a better life afterwards. So they're saying there, listen, some people saw a miracle and some people didn't see a miracle, but they stayed true to the word of God, believing that there's a resurrection of the dead. Come on, everybody. There is another place called heaven where the saints of God, the children of God, will spend an eternity with him. Like, listen, I'd rather obey God than men. And so we see this in, in Hebrews 11. They were in faith regardless how things went. I'm in faith trusting God today. And boy, that's how you stand out from this gener generation. In 1 Peter 5, 7, let, hi, let him have all your worries and cares. For he's always thinking about you and watching everything that concerns you. Isn't that a great scripture? You have some things troubling your soul? God's concerned about those things. Verse 19 Nebuchadnezzar hears him say, no, thank you. We're not going to do that. We're going to trust God. And he was filled with fury. Isn't it interesting? This wonderful king, he doesn't respect other people's opinions. He doesn't respect other people's way of life or thoughts. It's his way or the highway. And I got to tell you, when you have mutual respect, you let people, we don't have to agree, but I can respect what people believe, but I don't have to agree with you. And then it's interesting, the king here saying, no, this, it's my way or no way. There are no other points of view. That's kind of sad when you, when you operate that way. And so, it, it, look at this, he's filled with fury and his face becomes dark with anger. So his veins are a popping, da 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 da, probably right, and he, he's just rage all over him. You've seen those people, right? And Shadrach, he's mad with anger at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he commands the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual, because a fire before wouldn't do it. So let's really get him good for this. He he's he's got some rage issues going there. And he called some of the strongest men of his army. Because, come on, regular men wouldn't have worked. And they bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they throw them into the fire. 
and they, they bound them with tight ropes and threw them into the furnace. I guess they're afraid of them getting away, so they put the things on them and just threw them in. I don't know why you got to be bound being thrown in a furnace, but you do. And they're fully clothed. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames leaped out and killed the soldiers as they threw them in. So it's pretty warm. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell down bound into the roaring flame. Here's number three, my friends. Step up when it's your turn. How many know it's Shadrach, Meshach's, and Abednego's turn? You know what people ask me all the time when they're reading this? Where's Daniel? It's not his turn. <laughs> Daniel was in the chapter before interpreting a dream. And isn't that just like humanity? Come on, where's so-and-so right now? <laughs> when it's your turn, you ready? It's your turn. It's not everybody's turn at the same time sometimes. How many know it's your turn? And this is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's turn. Oh, Daniel's going to get another turn. Come on, we all know that. You've been to Sunday school, right? He gets his turn. So we all, we all go through trials and tribulations, but it's, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's turn. Some of you, you wish I could come to your family reunion. I'd, I'd probably enjoy some of those discussions with you or one of your prayer partners, but sometimes it's your turn and it's just you and Jesus or you and whomever in that situation. We're having a little fun, but you get the point. Verse 24, but suddenly as he was watching, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement. <laughs> He's like, and he exclaimed, didn't we throw three men into the furnace? He's like, wait a minute, what? What am, I, what am I seeing? Didn't we throw them? Yes, they said, we did indeed, your majesty. So they're confirming, one, two, three. Yes, there was three of them. Well, look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire. How did they get unbound when they were, I don't know, maybe the fire burned that part or maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe the, I don't know. Pretty cool though. Well, look, Nebuchadnezzar says, I see four men unbound walking around the fire and they aren't even hurt by the flames and the fourth one looks like a god or one translation says the son of God. And then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the open door of the, or, yeah, because the other soldiers died. So he's like, hello, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Come on, listen to the wording. Servants of the Most High God. What? Come out. Come here. I wonder if they were tempted to kind of hang out. It's better in here, right? They stepped out of the fire, but one minute he was like, throw them in the fire. And the next minute, hey guys, how you doing? Come on, come, come on out. We need to remember when we're standing out from the crowd to remember that God is always with you. He's always with you. When you're fear, maybe you're not literally feeling the flames, but it feels like you're in a furnace in life. You're getting squeezed. You're getting persecuted. You're going through difficulty. God is with you. How many know Jesus is with us in the fire today? He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. I, I love the scripture in Psalms 34, 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? Verse 28. You remember the who's who were invited. The princes, the governors, the captains, the counselors. They crowded all around them. I bet they did have a crowd because when you go in the furnace and you come out of the furnace, everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody's kind of crowding around. And they saw that fire, listen, they saw that fire hadn't 
touch them. And then it gets more specific. Not a hair of their heads was singed. Their coats were unscorched. And they didn't even smell of smoke. How do you, I mean, I've been around a campfire, and I wasn't in the fire, but I smelt like the campfire. Come on, right? Any campers out there once in a while? I mean, I smelt like smoke in my hair, and my jacket, and my clothes, just sitting next to the fire, and I wasn't in the fire. And they were in the fire, and they didn't smell like the fire. I, I don't know. God can do anything, right, everybody? And Nebuchadnezzar says, what's he say now? Blessed be the God. <laughs> That's a different, different start of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. For he sent his angel to deliver his trusting servants when they defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship at any God except their own. He said, we're not doing it. We're going to keep serving God. And I'm telling you, other people may put pressure on you to, to, to do something different than your faith, to worship in a different way. Guys, we've got to stand up from the crowd and say, I'm going to honor the word of God in my life. No matter what pressure you put on me, no matter what you ask me to do, I'm not going to defy the Lord. Because I'd rather listen to the Lord than the king. Come on, everybody. Amen. I love Isaiah 42, 3 and 4. Listen to this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers, I, it will not, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I'm the Lord your God, the Holy One, your Savior. I will be with you no matter what the circumstances are, God's saying to us. Verse 29, therefore, I make this decree that any person of any nation, language, or religion who speaks a word against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb. Well, we at least know the king's consistent. <laughs> he's going to serve the Lord extreme, and he's going to not serve the Lord extreme. <laughs> You don't serve Jehovah, we're going to rip your arms off. Anyways, I'm sorry. It's just, I read this and I'm like, huh, this poor guy is just not getting it. And then his house will be knocked down and there'll be a heap of ruin. <laughs> He's just like, and we'll drag him through the streets. Rah, right? Anyways, it's just, the guy's a little, I added that part, but it's just a little crazy here. For no other God can do what this one does. And then the king, look at this wording, gave promotions to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they prospered greatly during the, in the providence of Babylon. Isn't it interesting that the promotion came after they went through the fire? You know... Maybe you're waiting on God, but God's waiting on you. Maybe God wants you to do what you know is right, and you're waiting on God to do something for you, and God's waiting on you to do what you know is right. You know, we need to value, respect, honor, and read God's Word. It will renew our minds. It will help us to prove whether it's that good and acceptable and perfect will of God for our lives. You know, if somebody came to me and tried to force me to worship any other God but Jesus, I know from the scripture that's not acceptable. You and I would have to make a decision. Am I going to deal with the circumstances of this person putting pressure on me, or am I going to honor the Lord and the Word of God, what it says for me to do? You know, the Bible says as we get closer to the Lord's return, it's going to get darker and darker. In other words, people are going to call sin not sin. They're going to call it light. Or they're, but it's, going to, it's dark. It's going to be dark. And you're not going to know how to properly discern between what's right and what's wrong unless you read the Word of God. 
for yourself. That's why I beg you every day, please read the Bible. If you can't do it every day, read it as often as you can. You may, you may not have somebody with you. Maybe you do. Thankfully, they had each other, the three of them. But Daniel wasn't there. I don't know where he was, but I know he wasn't bowing down, worshiping a 90-foot-tall gold statue because that's not who Daniel is. And sometimes you may not know where your friend Daniel is or your friend here or your friend there, but how many know we need to stand up for what's right, honor the Word of God with our lives, and stand out from the crowd? Amen, everybody? Come on, to God be the glory today. Amen. He's good. He's a good God. I want to pray for you if I could, please. Father, today, I thank you that your word is true. It's alive. It's living. It's powerful. It helps us to discern right from wrong. Lord, today, I pray that we would have a greater appreciation to honor and respect the word of God. Help us to have a hunger and a thirst to read it because it, that will help us to stay in the right direction. God, I pray that the pressures we feel from others in this life, that we wouldn't be moved by fear, but we'd make decisions by faith. That we'd stand out from the crowd, not to bring glory to ourselves, or to bring glory and honor to ourselves, but we're only here to bring glory and honor and praise to you, Jesus. I pray today that we had, we'd have strength in the day of adversity. I pray we would be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I pray whatever persecution, whatever trials, whatever tribulations wouldn't cause us to bow the knee to any other God but our God. Today, Lord Jesus, we choose to serve you. We choose to honor you. We choose to love you. We choose to stand. No matter what comes against us, we will give you honor and glory and praise today. Father, thank you for powerful stories like these that encourage us in our faith. We saw you do a miracle. Men were thrown into a fiery furnace and they came back out unburned. They didn't smell like smoke. You're the God of miracles. And if you so choose, you could do a miracle in each one of our lives. God, we give you praise. You're the creator of heaven and earth. We will serve you. We will trust you. We will love you. We will honor you. Father, it's in the name above every name we pray right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you agree with me, say a hearty amen this morning. Amen. To God be the glory today. Come on, we worship you today. We worship you today. Would you just continue in that posture of prayer, just praying for the people around us, praying for people that are watching online. If you're watching, you do the same. Pray for people in the service and watching online. Let's just make this a moment where we talk to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Ask God to touch anybody who needs a touch right now. I believe there's people today, you feel like God is so far away. Can I tell you, he's reaching out his arms I could envision today. Why do you say, come, come, let me, let me help you. All we have to do is humble ourselves before him. Where do we begin, Pastor Rick? Well, first you've got to believe that Jesus is God's son, that he died on the cross, and then he rose again, and he's alive right now in a place called heaven. If you believe that, faith has already started on the inside of you, and now, it, now you just take a next step where you surrender your life to God. There's gotta be a moment in every believer's life where, where we say yes to Jesus, where we say, I want you in my heart, I want you in my life, I want you to be in control. And that's a pivotal moment where we surrender to God. I believe there's people under the sound of my voice in this building watching online. You say, I've never done that before. And today, for the first time, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Boy, it'd be a joy to pray for you. Maybe you're in a different category. You'd say, Pastor, I, 
I've prayed at one point, I've asked Christ in my life, but I'm not living right. Please pray for me. I just feel compelled to rededicate my life to God. Absolutely. If that's you this morning, you're watching online, you can comment and say, pray for me, and we'll do that. But if you're in this building, would you let me know that right now? If that's you, and please pray, everybody. Say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ or rededicate my life to God. If that's you this morning, you want me to pray for you, would you just boldly put your hand up high so I can see who I'm praying for today? Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Just going around the building here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you today. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Could we all pray this prayer together, especially those who raised your hands? And God sees you online. Let's pray this together. Would you pray, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me and that you rose again and you're alive right now. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Change my life. Help me to be the person you want me to be and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, everybody. That's exciting. Come on. Thank God for what he's doing in people's hearts and lives. Amen. We are... You were just guided through the salvation prayer. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, you have just made the best decision ever. We would like to connect with you to help guide you in your next steps with your relationship with Jesus. You can text FCC Guest to 97000 to connect with our team. You will fill out a connection card that will help us better know you. Now is the time in our service where we prepare to give our tithes and offering. If this is your first time tuning in with us, please feel no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. If you call FCC your church and you want to participate in giving today, you can text FCC Give to 97000 or you can give securely online at FCCLive.com forward slash give. I'm going to take this time to pray over our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for today. We're thankful for the ability to give, and we ask that you would bless our offering. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you'd like prayer today, you can text FCC Prayer to 97000, and a member of our prayer team will reach out to you. Thanks for joining us for church today, and have a great week.